If you trademark something like the name of your course, are other people then allowed to use that name or title as the title of something like a YouTube video? Let's talk to everybody's favorite IP and entertainment lawyer to find out more. My name is Tony Lee Costas. I'm an adjunct professor of entertainment law and IP at New York Law School and I have an Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok account called The IP Professor that is dedicated to all things intellectual property. Tony, when we have courses that we have trademarked the titles to, are other people allowed to then use our trademark titles as the name of a YouTube episode or a live stream episode, or is that restricted to them? So uh, I'm going to give the classic lawyer answer, the two words that everyone, every lawyer loves to say, it depends. Um, but I think in a situation like this, it really does depend. Um, it's all going to boil down to what the core trademark is trying to protect. So we've, we've talked a lot of times on, you know, Cam's channels here uh, about copyright. I'm not going to milk it to death. It's probably tattooed next to your live, laugh, love tattoo. But next to your no regrets tattoo, let's go ahead and tattoo a new definition about trademarks, uh, which we've talked about here and there. But trademarks are all about source identification. Trademarks use typically words, designs, or a combination of both that are used to fur that, that are used to identify the source of goods and services. So um, think of, let's say, the word Starbucks complemented with the, the mermaid logo complemented with the mermaid logo that has the stylized Starbucks logo and even the more stylized, simple Starbucks logo. All those variations qualify as trademark. Then we have like offshoots of it. The big one being trade dress, which would use product design, packaging, decor uniforms that are used to further the source identification of goods and services. So those white cups with the green circle from Starbucks, that is registered as trade dress in the US Patent and Trademark Office. You could register colors, you could register scents, which uh, the next time you smell Play-Doh, uh, you have that reminiscent of that like vanilla smell that's registered as a scent mark in the USPTO. Uh, there are motion marks. There are basically a bevy of different trademarks, types of trademarks out there. But the most common ones employ the use of words, designs, or a combination of both that identify the source of goods and services. So again, going back to Starbucks, the Starbucks Mermaid logo identifies the source of goods, coffee goods, as well as services, which be quick service restaurants in the business of, you know, coffee service or cafeteria, uh, quick service restaurants, if that's a more formal way of calling it that. So all of those are that that's just one example. I could use Nike as an example. Nike is regis, uh, registered as um, a trademark in classes of goods related to athletic wear, sneakers, apparel, um, Macintosh, uh, Macintosh shows me Apple. <laughs> Apple is registered as um, a trademark in classes of goods and services related to tech repair, tech retail, and actual tech. So in the same vein, when you're thinking of, let's say, calling a course or a YouTube channel, um, you know, a specific name that has already been trademarked, the first thing you want to see is, is that trademark going to clash with what you're trying to use? Because at the end of the day, if someone registered a trademark for, let's say, educational services, you want to make sure that that, what you're using, like, you know, the course name or what have you, um, isn't going to interfere with that specific trademark registration. Now, if they're in totally different classes of goods and services, it's the kind of thing where it's not going to, like, you know, raise a red flag and cause a, a real concern. I would even venture to say that maybe like a one-off class, if it is casually called the same thing as a trademark, I don't know if it's necessarily the kind of thing that would really rise to the level of creating some type of consumer confusion. And um, like kind of a, a relevant offshoot of that, there was a current event story about two years ago now um, involving the now Cleveland Guardians baseball team uh, the Cleveland baseball team formerly had a name that was misappropriating Native Americans. So in an effort to rebrand, they were looking for names out there and they decided to go for the Cleveland Guardians named after the Guardian uh, statue that is prominent in Cleveland, Ohio. So they register of what's called the submarine trademark filing in a country called Mauritius. You probably never heard of Mauritius. It's spelled M-A-U-R-I-T-I-U-S, Mauritius. And they filed it. Then they followed the trademark in the USPTO and call it a day. But then meanwhile, a roller derby team in Cleveland, Ohio, called the Cleveland Guardians finds out. And then they filed a trademark infringement lawsuit against the Cleveland Guardians baseball team. Now, the thing was that the Cleveland Guardians roller derby team had registered their trademark only in the state. They never registered a federal trademark in the USPTO. So ultimately, they settled. We don't have a firm idea of what the figures were. Um, we have an idea of what they did get, which was hostage. They claimed ownership of the 
of the, uh, the, the social media handles. But at the end of the day, there was really, I think, nothing that was kind of screaming as a smoking gun that said, oh, my God, two sports teams that are in completely different sports is going to cause consumer confusion. That's the kind of thing where I don't think it would have amounted to anything if it did lead to a full-fledged trademark infringement lawsuit. So again, if you're if you're casually calling yourself like you know calling a course that you have like a like a one time class, a specific class name that is uh reg that is using the same name that's already registered in the USPTO, the question is, would it arise to the level of consumer confusion? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. It's all going to depend on the facts and a lot of other information. But that's kind of where we are in the trademark landscape. That makes a lot of sense. So if people have questions on whether or not they can or cannot do something, what are some steps that they might take to make sure that they are legally protected and not infringing on yeah, anybody's rights? Yeah, so the rights? first thing is to uh, obviously consult with a lawyer if you have no idea about the trademark landscape. Um, I think then second to that is to do a comprehensive trademark search. There are a number of ways to do it. I would say the most common sense way to do it is to obviously go on Google. But then the second way to do it is to go on the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office website and conduct what's called the Trademark Electronic Search System, TESS. And you can search live and dead trademarks. Basically, dead trademarks are trademarks that are either abandoned or not renewed. Um, you, can reg you could search for a variety of different trademarks and see if somebody has already uh, registered a trademark for that specific name that you're trying to use. Um, I think it's also important to bear in mind, again, if the point of your class is, again, just to be like a one-off event and you're not doing it to create some type of robust brand, I I don't see anything where it should be a cause for concern because it, we, we would be having a totally different conversation if you wanted to create an entire course with modules and series right. calling, calling a specific course X name that is already registered in the US Patent and Trademark Office. In that sense, that's where there could be consumer confusion, especially if, let's say, your course is in the same class as a goods and services as the, the other course that also has a registered trademark in the U.S. Patent Trademark Office. And remember, trademarks are all about source identification and the moment that a consumer sees one brand and becomes confused as to its origin or what it's offering, that's where there could be some type of trademark infringement lawsuit. So I think it goes then back to step number one, which is to consult with the trademark attorney that can help you walk through that process to make sure that you're not infringing on any trademarks, that there isn't going to be any conflict in calling a course name something. Um, it's it's basically going to be a very uh, thorough process that would have to be done in order to get to that point. All in all, I think it, it's, a, it's a tedious process, but it's worthwhile, especially if you want to avoid any sort of headache uh, down the road. So doing your research up front is definitely going to save you a lot of time and effort on the back end. If you did not do your research and somebody reaches out to you to say you're infringing on their rights, it's always a wise choice to be speaking with your lawyer and to go back and get that research done so you actually know what you're talking about and then to take the appropriate steps from there. Sometimes you may have to take action and sometimes you may not, but that's why it's a great idea to chat with a lawyer. And if you have questions about this, go ahead and drop that down below. Tony is coming back for upcoming episodes to keep you legally protected in the entrepreneurial space and we do not want to miss your questions so let us know what you've got down below and as always you can reach out to tony on his socials tony where can everybody find you online you can find me on instagram youtube and tiktok at the ip professor and you can check out my weekly podcast and scene and entertainment law podcast every friday on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts hit that subscribe and notification bell so that you don't miss the upcoming episodes we are filming with tony to make sure you are legally protected in the entrepreneur space and drop your questions down below as we continue to drop daily episodes to help you navigate the world of tiktok instagram youtube live streaming lemon eight and the tools and resources you need to save time and effort creating your social content so you can make more money online but spend less time and stress doing it we will see you in the upcoming episodes and again if you've got questions now is the time to drop those